At the moment, they said they met on the aeroplane, but I'd say they've known each other for a while because they've both got the same documents in their bag. Uh, exactly the same booking company has booked their hotels, and they say they met on the plane. One of the documents they have located in both women's suitcases is an identical travel itinerary, complete with the same spelling mistakes. So the Kayama natural blowing, would that be the uh, Kayama blow by chance? Other items located in this woman's handbag raise officers' suspicions. She's got a bag of photos, passport photos. Yep. All different hairstyles. So that's a week. That could possibly be the hairstyle now. So she's changing her look. Yes. Yeah. Everything is indicating these women may be here for more than a holiday, as they claim. And the mystery deepens further as this passenger's mobile keeps getting calls from an Australian number. Just Frank. Yeah. Both women claim they know no one in Australia, so Officer Lee does some investigating. So the number that he's been trying to ring the passenger is linked to a hairdressing beauty salon, but the actual uh, company is registered as a brothel in uh, Western Sydney. Both women will now be taken for further questioning as officers try to work out how well they really know each other and what their intentions are. Border Force officers have pulled aside this passenger who is returning from Vietnam after they noticed some unusual behaviour. Just the way he acted around the baggage carousel sort of alerted my suspicions and this is why we've selected him for a baggage search. Nothing of concern is found in the man's suitcase, so officer's attention turns to the blue plastic bag he's carrying. The second bag is full of food stuff and it's all commercially sealed and packaged. Swabs are taken from the food packets to check for any traces of illicit substances. And this testing brings about a sudden change in the man's demeanour. He's now not as talkative as he was, and he's saying that he's a little bit uh, sick, that he's not feeling well. Officers assist the passenger after he explains that there is medication in his bag which he needs to take. We're going to go and get you something to eat. But you have to have something to eat to that and take this one. That one. But this one has to be taken with food. Can we get you something to eat? It's up to you. All right, we're going to give it to you. One this and one this. Swab samples are now run through the ion scanner, and the result is something that could see him deteriorate even further. <laughs> Biosecurity officers have noticed something unusual on the X-ray of a box belonging to this couple who have just returned from a trip to South America. You can see the outer layer of the box and you can see lots of little pins here. So do you mind just having a look? And when the box is opened, it sets alarm bells ringing for biosecurity officers. They're for a private collection. They're not for commercial use. They may not be for commercial use, but that is not the main concern. With insects, our concerns are that they don't carry any potential exotic disease or pests. We don't want those introduced into Australia. With the processing of the insects here, do you have any documentation to, to show us what you've done? We're out in the bush. Okay. Well, look, I mean, this a lot is... of these were found dead on the sides of the roads in cities. It turns out that the man is a long-time private collector of insects. They're from Peru, uh, Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. And um, we've just been on a 10 week tour and I just uh, pick up things as I go. So, and I've got a collection of 40 odd thousand specimens at home. The whole collection hopefully will end up in the South Australian Museum anyway. Yeah. 
Even though he has grand plans for his personal collection, what is of more pressing concern to officers is whether the bugs pose a threat to Australian agriculture and forestry industries. So they will now have to consult the current database of import conditions. Have the insects been preserved in the fix? No. Now he's saying yes. He's saying yes, but what we see, yes, correct. At the time. And there's no documentation exactly. provided. So, so we're saying no. Yep. And now the passengers are concerned they may lose their painstakingly gathered precious bug collection. We would never do anything to disrupt. I actually work the in conservation, system. so I know, yeah. I know where I'm going. Two women arriving on tourist visas claim they just met on the flight from China, but a search of their luggage has revealed they are carrying the same travel itinerary, complete with identical spelling mistakes, and they will now be questioned further. There were some concerns raised at the back of all, so we need to take them in the room and find out why they are really here for. Border Force officers suspect the women know each other and they may have travelled here for more than just a holiday. Are you travelling with anyone? I travel by myself. What is the purpose of your trip to Australia? Uh, for a new year. I'll come here for my holiday. What will you do on your holiday? I have a itinerary. Who prepared that itinerary? What do you do there? I made itinerary by myself. Since this plan was prepared by you, can you tell me what's in your plan? The woman is unaware that officers have found an identical itinerary in the other passenger's bag, and Officer Rakesh confronts her with this information. Miss Lin, this plan, the itinerary, was not planned by you. It's very clear now, because this is not the first time I've seen this itinerary. This is not planned by you. No, no. She said that she made the plan by herself. Miss Lin is sticking to her story. However, the passenger in the other room now makes a sudden change to her story. was not planned by you. It's very clear now. Because this is not the first time I've seen this itinerary. This is not planned by you. Border Force officers are interviewing two passengers arriving from China who initially claimed that they just met on the flight. But when confronted with identical travel itineraries found in their luggage, this woman has suddenly changed her story. So the other passenger has admitted that they are travelling together. So that counters the claim that your back is telling you that she's travelling alone. Yeah, why well, she's denying it. OK. With the women's stories now conflicting, officers do a little digging and they uncover further evidence revealing the truth. Now, we've just obtained the boarding pass from the second passenger, which confirms that they actually were seated side by side. Oh. Okay, um, also the sequence numbers of the boarding passes indicate that they were processed or checked in concurrently. So if they claim that they're travelling independently, it's very, it, it isn't actually plausible when you consider that they were both ticketed by the same agent, ticketed on the same day, visa granted on the same day, seated next to each other, presenting evidence of the same travel plans. Security officers have pulled aside this man in Sydney due to concerns over an extensive bug collection that he gathered in South America and that he hopes to bring into Australia. I started, like a lot of kids, with creeper crawlies and I just never grew out of it. So, I've always liked the uh, beetles. Butterflies don't really interest me because everyone does them. So. 
But I have discovered a few new species in the years. He's even got one named after him. Officers are diligently trying to determine whether the insects meet the latest import conditions, while the man claims that he has brought similar boxes of insects into the country on previous collecting trips. At present, what stands before us, the assessment that I make is placed on the current import conditions, OK? It is now clear to officers that they need to take a much closer look at the collection. What we need to do is actually make sure they're very clean. If you have a look in there, we're just making sure that there's nothing actually there's moving. No there's no mites or anything that's breeding on them. Officers' concerns are raised again that these bugs could be a threat to Australian agriculture. See, oh, should I see that in there? Border Force officers have taken swabs from this man's belongings to check for any contact with illicit drugs. We did an iron scan and the result is positive for ephedrine. Officers must now step up the investigation and open the packets. What is actually inside after looking, opening it up and looking inside is a white powder, so this then needs to be tested further. The suspicious powder will now undergo secondary testing while the man is thoroughly questioned. OK, so we're going to take you into the room over there and we'll get you an interpreter so that you can speak to the interpreter. Okay. Officers now read the man his rights. So you don't have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? Understand. While the man anxiously waits for the official test results, it appears he already knows it's not going to be a good result. Secondary testing of a white powder found concealed in food packets belonging to this passenger has confirmed officers' concerns. That has also resulted positive for ephedrine, which can be used uh, in the manufacturing of ice. As the evidence mounts against the man who appears to have been caught with a restricted substance, his state of health continues to decline. He's now saying that he's feeling sick. I do believe he may be a bit ill and dizzy, but I also believe that he's probably putting on a bit of a show. No, don't sit on the floor. I'm scared to fall down. Should he? I sit on the floor. You get them too long. Okay. His behaviour is making it impossible to continue the interview. He's saying he's still feeling sick, so at this point we've had to call for an ambulance. that in there. Biosecurity officers are closely examining the insect collection belonging to this man to make sure there is no evidence of dangerous pests or diseases and they have concerns about something they've noticed. Oh, it's just glue. Okay, that's glue. So they look pretty clean. Have a look through to that. And that little thing. Oh, no, that's part of that. That's the insect's actually fallen off that one. Okay. Yeah, so it's actually part of that little insect there. Okay, well, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah. So we've assessed them and we've double checked on the import conditions. Officers will now notify the passengers about the fate of their insect collection. So the good news is we're satisfied with what you've presented. So thank you. No thank problem. you very much. Guys, I'll hand that over to you and have a good day. Next time. See you next time. Thank you. It's his souvenirs from when we travel, and we can get them home and into the collection. And I, can, and I can spend hours working out what they are. Yes. I think that we've made their day. They were really happy we've released, been able to release those insects back to them.
Chinese national Ms Lin is adamant that she is coming to Australia alone, despite Border Force officers now having irrefutable evidence that she planned her trip with this woman. Ms Lin, your travel itinerary here has the same mistakes, spelling mistakes, as the other passenger who are we talking to in the other room. So how can that be possible, Ms Lin, that your unique travel plan is shared by someone else with exactly the same spelling errors. So, I'm saying, 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 I'm